A strength training program is designed to improve core strength. To test its effectiveness, 12 patients are timed in seconds while holding a position called the plank before and after a three-week strength program. Use the results below, the Wilcoxon sign rank test, and a 1% significance level to test the claim that the program increases core strength. Okay, so here they're asking us to use a specific procedure, the Wilcoxon sign rank test, in order to test the claim, right, that the program increases core strength. So, and notice it says the alpha level is 1%. Okay, so we have some pre-program, post-program data. That's pretty classic for the Wilcox and sign rate test. It usually involves um, a dependent sample, so or a pair of dependent samples. So we have a pre-program, post-program. Each one of these points comes from the same person, right? So every column represents one person that's been tested before and after a training program. All right, and so what we want to do then, because we're using the Wilcox and sign rank test, is begin by specifying the, um, the claim and the problem. So let's go ahead and do that first then. So the claim for the problem is going to involve eta, and we can actually look at something called eta d, which is the median difference, the population median difference. And we can talk about what that's going to be based on this claim. So let's think about something real quick. Um, we can do this two ways. I think for most people the simplest way is to think about this idea that it says the claim that the program increases core strength. So off to the side here, if we look, write something out, if we say that the median core strength pre-program, right, so this would be like the pre-program, would be less than the median core strength post the program according to this statement. Don't you think so? Because if it says that it's going to increase core strength, it means after the median core strength should be greater than the pre-core strength. Remember, this is the amount of time that you can hold this position, and if you're stronger, you'll hold it longer. So the median would be greater for the post group than for the for the pretest. So in a pretest, they haven't done the strength training program yet. After they do the strength training program, we assume that their ability would go up. Now look, if we were to take this number and move it over here, right, to bring it over here, then we're going to rewrite this as median pre minus median post, which can be summarized as the median difference between the two. And that symbol, you notice, will stay the same, that inequality symbol, and we'd have this value then. So that becomes our claim based on this idea. Now. Another way to think of it is if we did the subtraction pre minus post, right? So we did it as, a, as this it was a straight subtraction problem, putting a minus sign here, 38 minus 67. If the post number is supposed to be bigger than the pre number because the post training program should be um, a stronger person, so they're holding, that person's holding the plank for a longer position than they would when they first started out learning the plank, then because of that, if this number is higher, when you subtract a bigger number from a smaller number, you end up with a negative value. So that means that the median for the values here at the bottom would end up being negative. So that means the median difference is less than zero. So that also explains why this is the proper claim. All right, so whether you understood that fully or not, um, hopefully one of the two procedures will help you understand how to write the claim. I think for most people this one is easier because you just use a little algebra, right? This statement makes sense from what they told us, and then we just move the one on the right over to the left, and the inequality symbol will remain as it is with a zero there. Now the HO for the problem and the HA are done as they usually are done. If this is a less than symbol, it makes it the same as HA. So we're going to use median difference less than zero. And this one, of course, would be the median difference greater than or equal to zero. All right, from there, the next step is to write down our significance level. So we'll say alpha is 0 0.01. And then we want to actually go along and work with the data so we can come up with our test statistic. To work with the data, it's actually pretty involved. So what I'm going to do is actually um, put it on another sheet of paper and we'll work it out together. All right, so let's go ahead and get that sheet of paper up here and then we'll do that next. Okay, so let's look at this set of data here. And I've already done the manipulations that we have to do in the data step and we're just going to describe them. The reason why I've done them already is because they take a long time and it's probably something simple to do by yourself, but you really want to just see how it's done and have it explained to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to subtract from the pre-row all the post values, right? So if 38 minus 67, for example, gives us 29, but it'll be negative 29 because the number on the bottom is bigger. So 38 minus 67 yields negative 29. 
47 minus 92 gives you negative 45. 63 minus 120 gives you negative 57. So on and so forth. You'll do that for every single value. Now sometimes when you do the subtraction you'll get a zero because of the fact that there's going to be you know two numbers that are the same in this column. If that should happen to you, you have to discard that data value. You have to throw it out as if it didn't exist. And that means that your number of differences will not be what it looks like here. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 differences. That's where this n comes from. Well, if we had to throw one of them out because the difference was 0, then we'd only have n equals 11. So we reduce this n. That's going to become important when we go to get our critical value from the table. We'll have to look it up by a sample size. And so we want to make sure that if we have a 0, we throw out the data value and reduce the n accordingly. Now, sometimes you'll have positive differences mixed with the negative differences. This is a very unusual case where every single value in the post row is bigger than the pre row, so all our differences are negative. That doesn't usually happen. Usually then, you know, we'll have some negative, some positives. After that difference row, we take the absolute value of every number we see here, making all the negatives positive, right? And then we're, we rank the data in order. So we rank the absolute values, in other words. So this is the smallest value, so I rank it 1. This is the next smallest, I rank it 2. This would be the next smallest, I rank it 3. Next smallest, I rank it 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? We don't have any ties in these differences, so we don't have to worry about handling ties here. But if we do have ties, we handle it the same way we've always done it. We will average the, uh, you know, the ranks for the tied values, and then we give it the corresponding average rank for each of the tied values. Okay, so now that's what we do. After we have the ranks, then what we do is we go back and we total up the ranks for the negative differences and total up the ranks for the positive differences. Now here, because all the differences were negative, the rank total for my negative differences is got all the values. It's got 78. So if I add up all these blue numbers, the ranks for all the negative differences, I get 78. There are no positive differences, so the rank total for that category is zero. Now. Let's take that information back to our um, hypothesis testing procedure to see what that means for us in terms of our test statistic. Okay, so I'm just going to write down what we had there. We had that the t negative value turned out to be 78. The t positive value turned out to be 0. Now let's talk about our test statistic to see what our test stat should be. It turns out our test stat is going to come from looking at HA. We're going to think about what HA is saying. HA is saying that the differences should be less than zero. They should be negative, right? So basically what that's saying is that if the median difference should be negative, you can basically think of that as letting us know that the negative differences should be the bulk of them. We're going to let the opposite one be our test stat. So we're going to let T positive be our test stat. So in this case, our test stat is the number zero. Because the idea of it is this. Basically, what we're going to do is our critical value is going to be a small number, and we're going to compare our test stat against it. And we're going to decide to reject the null hypothesis whenever the test stat is less than our critical value. So that's just the rule. That's what we use, right? So the point is, is that here, because the HA is saying that there should be a lot of negative differences, hence the median is negative, right? The median difference is negative. That means this one is expected to be a large value compared to this one. So we're going to compare the one that's supposed to be small against our critical value. Okay, now to get the critical value, what you have to do is you have to go to your critical value table, which is going to be the Wilcoxon sign rank test table, and you'll see that in your textbooks. Um, when you go to that table, what you're going to do is you're going to look up the following values. You need to look up 10 and 12, right? So we're going to look up 12, we're going to look up alpha equals 0 0.01. I'm going to remind you that this is a one-tailed test. We have to know that it's one-tailed here based on HA being less than, right? So n equals 12, alpha is 0 0.01 in a one-tailed test. And then from here, we're going to go to the table to get our critical value, right? So let's use this information and go to our table to determine what our critical value should be. Okay, so let's go there now and figure that out. Okay, so we're on the Wilcoxon paired difference sign rank test table. And what we're looking for here is for n equals 12 first. So we're going to come around to n equals 12. And then once we're on n equals 12, we want to look at the 0.01 in one tail. So remember, there's a one tail column and a two tail column. We're looking for 0.01 in one tail. 
that's this area here, and we're going over to where n is 12. So we end up with a value of 10. So 10 is our critical value, t naught, we call it. t naught is 10. Okay, so our critical value, t naught, is equal to 10. Let's talk about the rejection region. We're going to reject HO if t, in this case t positive, right, but in general our test statistic is less than or equal to t naught. So in this case, this is how the problem is going to work. For our particular scenario, we're going to see if t positive, the rank total for the positive differences, is less than or equal to t naught. If it is, we're going to reject HO. And of course, when we do this, we see that the t positive is 0, which is less than or equal to 10. So that means we're going to, therefore, reject HO. If we reject HO, we'll support HA. Okay, now looking at our claim, we see our claim is HA, so we're going to go ahead and say that we should use the wording support the claim. So we'll say the sample data support the claim. The sample data support the claim. And of course, the claim is that the exercise program increases core strength, right? That's the idea behind the problem. So that the program increases core strength for its participants.